A lovely 57 degree day in Los Angeles as we begin day two of the Southern California College Baseball Classic. Hello everybody and welcome to Jackie Robinson Stadium on the campus of UCLA as the 12th ranked Bruins play host to the Sacramento State Hornets. I'm Jonah Malkin, delighted to be with you. A beautiful Saturday matinee, the 10th meeting between these two programs and a great opportunity for UCLA to build on their win last night. Sacramento State coming off a loss to the hands of the USC Trojans, falling narrowly 8-7. to seven. Meanwhile, UCLA a winner against Tulane last night, 10-3 to three here at Jackie Robinson Stadium as they look to win two consecutive games on the season. They're perfect 6-0 at home this year, trying to keep that streak alive. Meanwhile, Sacramento State... 0-1 on the road. They've only played one official road game, and that was last night at Dado Field, home of the USC Trojans. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. First for the Sacramento State Hornets, again coming in with a 6-2 overall record out of the Western Athletic Conference. Jorge Bajorquez is the leadoff man, Gunnar Goldsmith, in the two-hole, the freshman, Viheva Aloy, the shortstop, super talented. Expect him to have a breakout game. He's been tremendous so far for the Hornets this season. Jeffrey Hurd as well. Carson Blatnick, the starting catcher in today's game, batting seventh. Garrett Crenshaw in the eight-hole and rounding out the starting lineup, Josh Rowling, the center fielder, coming off a two-for-four outing against USC. And defensively, for UCLA, one of the best defenses in the NCAA. Their pitching staff has also been tremendous. Tremendous. Alonzo Treadwell on the bump. He's the marquee guy making his third start of the season. But in the outfield, Carson Yates over in left. Tucson by the wood stationed at center. A.J. Salgado getting the start in right. In the infield, Dalen Reyes. Over at first base, manning that first base bag. He's going to be busy today. Deuce Gorson at second. Cody Schreier coming off a two-home run outing against Tulane last night. He's over at short and positioned at third, Kyle Karros. And finally behind the dish is LaPosser. And as I mentioned, that big extension, Alonzo Treadwell, third start of the season for him. What a campaign he's been putting together Hasn't surrendered a run all season. He's been absolutely magnificent. Can clear 95 on the fastball, utilizing the slider, the curveball, and the changeup. Again, just a sophomore. But he headlines a sophomore class that coming into this season ranks number one in the nation. He's a big reason why. Already draft eligible. For the MLB draft, we'll see if he ultimately decides to remain a UCLA Bruin. Certainly has the talent to potentially leave. And he's looking forward to his second start here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. So away we go. Glad to have you with us for this Saturday matinee. UCLA leads the all-time series 8-2. to two, But the last time these two teams played was in 2000. And 19 on March 3rd, almost identical. Today's March 4th. And Jorge Bajorquez will step in. The first pitch is underway. It's a swing and a miss. Start time 2.01 here in Los Angeles. Home plate umpire David Buck. First base umpire Mike Lusky. The official over at second, Ramon Armendaris. As the curveball just falls outside, one ball, one strike. And the third base umpire, Joe Burleson. An experienced crew. They've already been the officials for a UCLA baseball game in the past. 1-1, one, one. curveball tipped foul, one ball, two strikes. Jorge Bajorquez, the junior, making his ninth start of the season. He's hit a double in three straight games, batting 333 on the season. Having a nice start to his 2023 campaign. 
One-two curveball just dips below the zone, evened up at two apiece. Treadwell this season already 17 strikeouts. Had a career-high 10 strikeouts in his last start here at Jackie Robinson Stadium against the University of Omaha. In the dirt, and the count moves full. I asked him about that first performance a couple of weeks ago. If he had any butterflies, any jitters, and he acknowledged he was super excited, very bubbly before his first pitch. Last season, he had primarily served as the team's closer, but this year he's been the lead man on the bump. Payoff pitch, that one's driven high and deep into right. Salgado drifting towards the foul line and makes the catch for the first out. A.J. Salgado making just his seventh start of the season. For the redshirt sophomore, collects the first out of the first. So I'll bring up Gunner Goldsmith, junior out of Reno, Nevada. Had an RBI single in the third against USC. That was part of an electric game, 15 combined runs as the fastball beats him down the middle for strike one. Hornets fought valiantly, fell eight to seven, but they had a minor lead seven to five entering the seventh. Fastball zips inside, one ball, one strike. Goldsmith contributed to that one run in the third inning. They also played it one in the fourth. Fought back to tie it up at two apiece heading into the fifth inning. 1-1 one, one breaking ball beautifully falls in there for a second strike. They're trying to bounce back against their second Southern California foe in as many days. One-two from Treadwell. Breaking ball got him to swing. It's in the dirt collected by LaPasser and a 2-3 put out. Puts two away to begin the first. And this is the challenge facing Sacramento State. This is the best pitching staff that they have gone up against this season. UCLA top 10 in the nation in collective ERA. And this guy's a big reason why. As Vahiva Aloy, half swing, pulls back. Little change up from Treadwell's in there for a strike. Has great command over all of his pitches, a huge repertoire. This time brings the heat and it clips the top part of the zone for strike number two. Drifts outside, one ball, two strikes for Treadwell. UCLA this season, 2-0 on Saturdays, currently undefeated in the month of March. Breaking ball got him looking, and Treadwell makes quick work of the top of the lineup. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. To the bottom of the first we go, UCLA's offense coming to the plate when we come back. And welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium as we begin the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the starting lineup 
for the UCLA offense. We got a sight of the defense, but this offense has been prolific, collectively batting 282 on the season with 76 RBIs, one of the best marks in the season and in the NCAA. Cody Schreier showing off the goods in his last game. He's the leadoff man coming off a two-home run performance. Deuce Gorson, Kyle Karros rounding out the top of the order. Dalen Reyes batting cleanup today. Carson Yates also in the starting lineup. And Toussaint Bythewood in the sixth spot. The freshman making just his second start of the season. Holman, LaPasser, and Salgado round out the bottom of the order. And Noah Lucchesi, the sophomore out of Elk Grove, California, making his third start on the mound this season. He's been the ace for the Hornets. 1.69 ERA as the lefty air mails it too high for ball number one. His last start came in the third game of the series against St. Thomas. Hornets won that 10-1 to pretty easily. One is fouled in the opposite side of the ballpark. One ball, one strike. Made 10 starts last season, already in his third this year. 2-0 and record on the bump for the Southpaw. And the fastball paves the upper inside corner for one ball and two strikes. Just 10 innings of work. He's been extremely efficient. One, two out of the stretch just glides off the plate to a piece. Meanwhile, for Schreier, I mentioned the success that he had yesterday. Two home runs in the same game. He's got three on the season. Off to a great start. Tips it foul over the screen. And we'll do it again. It was his first multi-home run game of his career. Not too big of a stance from Schreier. 2-2. Two -two clipped foul into the glove of Blatnick. And there is one gone. The first strikeout for Luke Kenzie and a nice start for the Hornets pitcher. That'll set up the sophomore out of San Diego, Deuce Gordon. Lefty hitter, righty thrower. It was two for five against the green wave of Tulane with an RBI and a double. It was an auspicious start against the Green Wave as he chops this one over the head of Bayorquez. The throw across the diamond is in time. Boy, what a recovery from Aloy. He was falling back and still got enough power on it to record the second out. Tremendous freshman defensive player. Already... 13 putouts this season, 24 assists defensively for the Hornets. Just continues to amaze this coaching staff. They've loved what they've seen from him. As Caro steps in, takes a breaking ball that dips below. One ball, no strikes. Junior batting 361 on the year, 13 hits, 13 runs. Takes a strike there for one and one. Glides off the plate, two balls, one strike. Kyle Karros, one of the leaders of this UCLA ball club. 6'5", junior, always vocal during... Pre-game routine, rips one right up the middle, and it's a two-out base hit for Kyle Karros to extend the inning for the Bruins. 14th hit of the season, and he passes the baton to Dalen Reyes. Reyes hit his first career triple at an RBI. Did commit the only error of the game against the Green Wave, but did so many other positive things. Was rewarded, making his eighth start of the year. He 
He's got Karos over at first. Fastball's in there for strike one. Luke Kenzie with four strikeouts this season. He's only given up ten hits. But he hasn't faced an offense quite like this one. 0-1 fouled into opposite territory, nothing in two. Jalen Reyes got off to such a fast start to begin the season, was delivering hits in almost every single game through the first eight. Then against Michigan cooled off as he takes a breaking ball high for one and two. Was 0 for 5 against the Wolverines. Snapped a streak of six consecutive games with a hit. Trying to refine that groove. Staring at a 1 2. Drifts high, two balls, two strikes. Good lead from Karos. 2 2 fastball runs low, and the count moves full. This UCLA lineup, their bats put so much pressure on opposing pitchers. Against Pepperdine, a game they won 11 to 2 a few weeks ago, they scored seven runs with two outs. Payoff pitch popped up and out of play. They scored seven runs in the first inning of that game. And again, all of them came with a two out situation. So they're impervious to these types of big spots. Big one for the Hornets defense. Payoff offering and again fouled back. Luke Kenzie made a statement facing Cody Schreier. Struck him out. Induced a ground ball 6-3 put out. Kyle Karros bested him up the middle. And Ray is trying to extend it. This one is driven high into center, rolling, drifting to his right, makes the catch. And that will end a little bit of a scare, but no runs come around. One hit, no errors, and one left on base. We're through one inning here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. On to the second when we return. Top of the second inning as we welcome you back to Jackie Robin Stadium. Jonah Malkin, delighted to be with you. UCLA and Sacramento State meeting for the 11th all-time tilt. Bruins coming off a victory last night against Tulane. Sacramento State losing to USC, just their second loss of the season. Treadwell's first pitch dips below the zone for ball one.
Cesar Valero, the designated hitter, puts one into the glove of Schreier. He scooped it up before he even took a bounce. Good heads up play from the shortstop to collect the first out. Just a hot line over to Schreier. He was receiving so much attention for his offense, but the defense has also been superb. Redwall, that one's in there for a strike, a fastball to Jeffrey Hurd. Sophomore out of San Jose, was one for four against USC with an RBI and a doubles, his first double of the season. 0-1, swing and a miss for strike two. That two-seamer for Treadwell. Typically throws the fastball between 92 and 95, but has great control and command. This time, utilizing the breaking ball, cuts him down, and it's the second strikeout. Make it the third strikeout for Alonzo Treadwell. His last start at Jackie Robinson Stadium, career high in that category. Three-season All-American by multiple media outlets. Perfect zero ERA on the season. Hasn't given up a home run of any kind or any runs as he turns to the breaking ball to Marton Vincelli Samar. Take strike one. So filthy when he can utilize the fastball and then turn to that huge curve. Working to perfection now. 0-1 brings the heat. Fouled against the screen for strike two. Nobody on. Two away in the top of the second. The 0-2 is in there for strike three. Fourth strikeout in the second looking for Alonzo Treadwell as he comes up big again. On to the bottom of the second. Five, six, and seven. Batters coming up to the plate for the Bruins. And welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium, of course, named after the legendary baseball player Jackie Robinson, the first African-American baseball player to play in the majors. Tremendous student athlete at UCLA. Became the Bruins' first four-sport letterman, played football, ba basketball, track, and, of course, baseball. There's also a bronze statue located near the concession stand of the concourse level, dedicated to him in 1985, right before the UCLA-Arizona State game. As Noah Lukenzi, his first pitch runs outside. One ball, no strikes to Carson Yates, junior out of San Jose. Had two RBIs against the Green Wave last night. Fouls the second pitch out of play, and it's one and one. And you can see there the statue dedicated in his honor. Just a profound impact, left an indelible mark on the sport, especially here at UCLA. 1-1, that's 
flown into right. Crenshaw is going to make the catch for out number one. This defense playing well so far. Already a strikeout for Luke Kenzie. Couple flyouts. He's only given up a base hit to Kyle Karos. And when talking to the coaching staff, I asked them about what they thought of their performance last night against USC and just all together when it comes to the season. They were really impressed with their competitiveness, especially defensively. As Bythewood puts it on the ground a second, Goldsmith snags it and makes the play to first for out number two. Was really pleased with their infield effort in particular. Gave up a couple bombs, sailed over the yard. But with the exception of a couple of those home runs, he thought that the entire coaching staff was really pleased with the performance all around. First real test of the season. Now they're second going up against the top 25 team. As Jack Holman, the designated hitter, lefty takes a strike down the heart of the plate. It's 0-1. Preseason all-pack 12 selection. Hasn't connected on a hit, though, in his last three games. Pulls a breaking ball foul, nothing in two. In fact, his last hit came against Vanderbilt. Difficult road series. The Bruins lost two of three against the Commodores. Luke Kenzie's fastball sails away. Holman will dig back in. One ball, two strikes. Commodores ranked number five in the nation. The best early test for UCLA this season. One, two, he's gonna flex this one into left center and that is gonna be slidingly caught by Hurd. A sliding grab, and that will end the inning. Another three up, three down, as both defenses showing off the goods defensively. We'll step aside on to the third when we return. No score through two as we head into the third. Welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium. First look at the bottom of the order for the Hornets in Sacramento State. The starting catcher, Carson Blatnick, making his first plate appearance. The junior making his fifth start of the season, batting 286. Didn't play at all against the Trojans last night. And his first pitch he takes for ball one. Fastball dipped below for Alonzo Treadwell. Already has racked up 
four Ks in two innings. 1-0 fastball induces a pop-up. Gorson is called off by Reyes, blocking off the sun, a backhanded catch. Made that look a lot easier than it actually was to collect the first out. Coaching staff here at UCLA, they do such a great job in their pregame training, their drills. Especially with those pop-ups, they work on that all the time. That's something Coach Savage talks about. First pitch, a fastball misses inside to Garrett Crenshaw for ball number one. And again, that series against Vanderbilt really tested this team. It challenged them in a way that they hadn't been challenged to start the year. 1-0 is fouled out of play. One ball, one strike. But overall, a very respectable showing for a UCLA team playing the fifth-ranked Commodores on the road, shutting them out in game two. As Treadwell turns to the breaking ball again, that's been so effective today for the second strike. Treadwell, of course, was the starter in the lone victory in that series. Didn't give up a run in five innings. Curveball dips below, two balls, two strikes. It was really the lack of offensive production from the UCLA bats that hindered their ability to win. They only managed to drive in three runs once. Fastball cut on and missed for strike three. Alonzo Treadwell has fanned five, and they're two away in the top of the third. That was Treadwell's last start against Vanderbilt. Staring at Josh Rowling. It was the most productive Hornet last night, two for four against the Trojans. Takes a fastball, that's in there for strike one. Junior out of Reno batting 266, hit a home run last night to left field. Takes another fastball for strike two. Part of a fifth inning in which the Hornets played at four. Propelled them to lead it at that stage of the game. 0-2 no breaking, ball tails away, one ball, two strikes. But Rowling was instrumental in just keeping them in this Southern California day number one. Again, against the Trojans, they needed all of his at-bats. One, two stays high, two balls, two strikes. Trying to keep this inning alive for Sacramento State. Two, two, looping into left, and that will drop just below the wall. He'll turn for second, and a two out stand up double as his helmet falls off. And he gives the Hornets a runner in scoring position. First hit conceded of the afternoon for Treadwell. The first hit for Sacramento State. And it comes in the top of the third as we head back to the top of the order with Jorge Bajorquez, who flew out to right his first time up. Big opportunity for him. Just two RBIs on the season. Treadwell, 12-6 breaking balls in there for strike one. In the dirt, got him to swing around it. Effective, intentionally errant throw, and it's nothing in two. The way that he can just manipulate 
the speeds, the placement. Fairly typical when he gets a batter to strike and swing through a fastball, typically goes to the curve. We'll see if he turns to that here with an 0-2. Trying to get out of this inning. This time it bounces in the dirt. It's going to get away from LaPasser. And a wild pitch allows Josh Rowling to scoot on over 90 feet away from home plate. Just the second wild pitch thrown this season from Treadwell. Had slight command issues against Vanderbilt, only in the form of of conceding four walks. So it wasn't quite up to his normal snuff as Mike Lusky over at first base says that he did not go around the swing. Full count. Already five strikeouts for Treadwell. On the ground. Gorson is there, makes the flip, and that will end the inning on a 4-3 putout. Treadwell avoids a little bit of a scare. Leaves rolling, stranded at third, but no runs come around on just one hit and no errors. We're scoreless through two and a half on to the bottom of the third when we come back. You're watching UCLA Baseball on the Pac-12.com. Beautiful mid-50 degree Saturday here in Westwood. A little chilly for the fans sitting in the bleachers, but baseball players, baseball fans like to feel like they play in the elements, they sit in the elements. It's certainly been a colder streak in Los Angeles. But the players love this type of weather as Knox LaPasser swings on the first pitch from Lukenzi for strike number one. Posser making just his third start, fifth appearance of the season. Flies one into shallow right, and that's going to drop foul down the first baseline. Nothing in two. Was hitless against Tulane. Did draw a walk. The walks have been his area of specialty. He has managed to draw a walk in every single game that he's played this season. In fact, the UCLA Bruins as a team have the fifth best walk differential in the NCAA. Chops one to first, and the flip over to Lukenzi. Vincelli Samar did a good job to get a hold of it, and Lukenzi steps on the bag for the second out. Pardon, the first out. 3-1 flip as A.J. Salgado making his first plate appearance at the bottom of the order in the nine hole today. The redshirt sophomore out of Glendora. Coming off a one for four performance against Tulane. That ball just misses outside and it's 1-0. and oh. Former Golden Eagle, Cal State, L.A. Takes a strike. 
one of five siblings as well. So patience certainly one of his redeeming qualities. Takes ball two. He was very talkative in the dugout before first pitch. He was really proud of the team's performance last weekend against Vanderbilt. Lays off the fastball, it stays high, three balls and one strike. But he put the onus on the offense to step up and deliver. Didn't feel like they did a good job bailing out the pitching staff. Did a tremendous job. 3-1. Whistles in there to move the count full. McKenzie with one strikeout today has only allowed one hit. Left Caro stranding at first. And the payoff pitch misses outside. The first walk for the Bruins today, courtesy of A.J. Salgado. That's actually the first walk drawn by Salgado this season. And in a Bruins uniform. So we head back to the top of the lineup. Cody Schreier set the tone yesterday. A home run on the second pitch that he saw. Just crushed it into left. He's going to try to drive this one into right on the first pitch. He sees back at the wall and an adjustment catch by Crenshaw. Got a little spun around. Was past the warning track and still held on for the second out. Nice concentration by Crenshaw over in right. And again, with the sun just beaming specifically in that part of the field, a lot more difficult and challenging to make that type of catch. And Deuce Gorson now tasked with trying to extend the inning. A.J. Salgado drew that walk he's over at first. And Gorson takes a fastball down the heart of the plate for strike one. Grounded out to short his first time up in the first. Runner's going to go. Second pitch is a strike. The throw to second is in time. Blatnick, beautiful placement. Guns down A.J. Salgado. Good tag by Goldsmith. And it keeps this a scoreless game. No score through three. It's day two of the Southern California College Baseball Classic. Top of the fourth coming up next. It's been a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel as we welcome you back to Jackie Robinson Stadium on to the top of the fourth. Alonzo Treadwell has already fanned five. Navigated around a little scare at the end of the third inning. Josh Rowling had advanced all the way to third as Gunnar Goldsmith, the lefty hitter, steps in. Takes a ball in the dirt for 1-0. and 
was struck out his first time up, followed by a throw over from Laposter to Reyes. There hasn't been much offense so far. Second pitch is just fouled down the third baseline. One and one. Junior making just his third start of the season in Goldsmith. But has started now the last three games. Coach Reggie Christensen has found something with him. A little more of an explosive bat was what he said as he's going to lace this one up the middle. And it's a leadoff single for Gunnar Goldsmith. Second hit of the game for the Hornets. Offense batting 254 on the season. The 66th hit in 2023 for Sacramento State. Again, this is just the second true road game of the year. First was last night against USC. Trailed 1-0, led 3-2. Had a chance in the ninth. Jorge Bajorquez flew one deep into the outfield. It nearly got over the wall. But Carson Wells of USC just leapt up Kept that ball in play into his glove, and that was all she wrote. Nearly sent the game into extra innings. A one from Treadwell. Tipped foul, nothing in two. The Heva Aloy has already made a couple of nice defensive plays over at short today. Team high batting average 406 as a true freshman. He's collected a hit in every single game that he's participated in this year. Was struck out looking, though, his first time up. 0-2, high chopper, charging is Schreier. Quick release, and Reyes keeps his foot on the bag for out number one. Goldsmith does move on to second. But a nice 6-3 put out for the first out in the fourth for the Bruins' defense. Tenth put out of the year for Cody Schreier. Part of the Pac-12 All-Conference team, a consensus freshman All-American last year. He's also a preseason All-American in the Pac-12 this year as well. Now Cesar Valero takes a breaking ball, but he kept his swing back. One ball, no strikes. He lined out to the aforementioned Schreier. Just stuck on the glove of Schreier, like gum underneath a subway rail. Just did not move an inch. 1-0 fastballs in there for strike one. You can see Treadwell taking a peek, not only at second for Gunnar Goldsmith, where he's currently stationed, but also at the pitch clock. That's one of the new changes in baseball this season, trying to speed up the game. Breaking ball, got him to tip it foul into the glove of Laposser. And it's strike two. New element implemented across all levels of professional and college baseball. This reduces the playing time for the players out on the field. One, two out of the stretch. Got him looking. Strikeout number six for Alonzo Treadwell. And there are two away in the top of the fourth. Boy, that big extension, just so deadly. 6'8", right-handed pitcher with that height. Just great trajectory, keeping that ball low. Has only been touched up a couple of times. First pitch to Hurd, drifts high, one ball, no strikes. He struck out Hurd in the second during his first plate appearance. The hitter digs in. 1 0 from Treadwell. 
protective swing, foul back, one ball, one strike. Hurd played a critical role yesterday against USC, delivered a two RBI double, gave the Green Waves seven to five advantage in the fifth, just couldn't hold on to that lead, put them in a great spot. 1-1, one, one, smacks that deep into right back goes Salgado, and he can watch that one go. Two-run home run from Jeffrey Hurd, and it's 2-0 to the Hornets. First time Alonzo Treadwell has conceded a home run or even a run scored this season. That had to have felt good. Second home run of the season for Jeffrey Hurd, the sophomore out of San Jose, providing his team a spark in the fourth as the first pitch to Martin Vincelli Samar is in there for strike one. Those are just devastating, those two out runs to concede. Trying to bounce back Treadwell with the curveball in the dirt. Several feet in front of home plate. One ball, one strike. Vincelli Samar still searching for his first hit in Southern California. It was 0 for 4 last night as well. Got him on the curve, 12-6 is in there, one ball, two strikes. Another curve ball pulled foul, and we'll do it again. Hornets at one point against Nevada, an opponent that they faced earlier this year. They hit three home runs in that third inning as he pops it foul. This isn't necessarily a team that tries to beat you by a thousand cuts. They like the long ball, they search for the long ball, and they oftentimes connect on it. They've done that so far today. One and two, fastball got him looking, runs inside. And Vincelli, Samar, struck out to end the top of the fourth. The seventh strikeout for Alonzo Treadwell, but he does give up a two-run blast by Jeffrey Hurd. UCLA trailing by two as we head into the bottom of the fourth. It is just the third time all season that UCLA has trailed at some point in a ball game. Noah Lucchesi has kept them off the board. A clean sheet so far for the Hornets defense as we head into the bottom of the fourth. Jeffrey Hurd 
delivered for the time being the go-ahead two-run homer over the right field wall. And he's given the Hornets a 2 nothing advantage as Gorson pulls the first pitch foul for nothing in one. UCLA in the nine previous games this season, all seven of their wins, they scored first. When their opponent scored first, as was the case against Vanderbilt in two of their losses, they lost as Gorson smacks that and drives high and deep into center and a beautiful solo shot response. Deuce Gorson saw what Jeffrey Hurd did and said, I can deliver a home run myself. Bruins cut into the deficit, it's two to one. Third home run of the season for the sophomore out of San Diego. And that is just the type of response that the Bruins were hoping for. Fall behind in the bottom half of the inning, immediately respond. As Kyle Karros is one for one so far, had delivered prior to that homer the first hit of the game and the only hit of the game for the Bruins. 0-1 was left stranded at first in the first inning. 0-1 smacked up the middle, stumbling as Lukenzi recovers the ball in time and makes the play to Vincelli Samar. Was twisted up a little bit. Karros ripped it right into his glove. Did a good job to adjust in time. And collects the first out of the fourth. Karros nearly beat out the throw. I'll bring up Dalen Reyes. One for three against Tulane. Two fifty nine batting average this season. Takes a breaking ball, drops in there for a strike. Flew out to center his first time up. And that says a lot, by the way, for Deuce Gorson to hit that home run into center. 395 feet in dead center. This one is lifted. Little blooper into shallow right, and Goldsmith comes back to make the grab. Second out. And now Carson Yates will try to keep this inning alive. Flew out to right his first time up. Give credit to Noah Lukenzi. He's been mixing up his pitches a bit. Hasn't made it easy on these Bruins bats. Fastball runs low and outside. One ball, no strikes. Second pitch, clips the outer zone, one and one. And again, beautiful, just paves the top part of the zone, one ball, two strikes. Lukenzi with one strikeout, has only given up two hits. Trying to mitigate the damage in the fourth. And that is going to get away from the glove of Aloy. Carson Yates finds a soft spot. And a two-out single for the junior. Aloy had a chance. Almost laid out for it. Just had a little too much sizzle off the bat. And Carson Yates with his fifth hit of the season. Keeps this inning alive as Toussaint Bythewood will try and do the same. Righty gets nothing but air. And that smacked Blatnik right in his chest plate. Freshman out of Encino made his first career start yesterday against Tulane. Second consecutive start. 
as that pitch runs outside. One ball, one strike. As you saw it, Bythewood grounded to second his first time up. Soft roller up the middle. Aloy with the shift. Can he get enough strength on the arm? The scoop up. Beautifully done. Vincelli Samar snagged it off the one hop. And that will end the inning. But the Bruins get one back. Courtesy of Deuce Gorson solo home run. 2-1 advantage for the Hornets. On to the fifth. Welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium. A look at some of the concession stands. In fact, there was a beautiful tribute at the start of the day. The Bruins were honoring Monique Cathy, who has been leading the snack bar for the last 20 years. Gave her a nice pregame tribute as the first pitch from Treadwell so Carson Blatnick drops below the belt for ball number one. Just a great gesture of appreciation for the staff that work here on a consistent basis and do such a great job making the environment enjoyable. Fans continue to trickle in. A nice showing here on the west side. 2-0 from Treadwell brings the heat. Strike taken at the knees for 2-1. One of the most beautiful yet secretive and almost clandestine baseball parks in Southern California. Sliced foul from Blatnick, two balls and two strikes. Just nestled right underneath the 405 freeway here in Westwood. Beautiful atmosphere for baseball. 2-2 breaking ball. Treadwell thought he had it. And you can see just how easily disguised it is. Beautiful job by our camera crew and our production staff getting you that look and that vantage point. Payoff pitch. Got him to swing it around. And it's strikeout number eight for Treadwell to begin the fifth. Garrett Crenshaw was struck out. Crenshaw back in the third. Fastball smacked back against the screen. Nothing in one. It's not about how you start, but how you finish. Treadwell trying to bounce back from giving up that two-run homer in his last outing on the mound. Got the call there on the breaking ball, nothing in two. Oh, two, and that is going to be snagged. Yates charging forward, a liner to left. He got underneath it, and there are two gone.
just hung there in suspension just enough for Carson Yates to make the defensive play. So now Josh Rowling, he extended the inning back in the third, advanced all the way to third. Take a breaking ball for ball one. Great player, especially in the nine hole. Shows bunt, pulls back. Curveball's in there for one and one. Son of Kristen and Henry's dad played nine seasons in the NFL. Drafted by the Bucks in the fifth round, 1987. Chops one to third. Karros is there on the backhanded stop and fires it over the diamond to end the inning. Three up, three down for Treadwell and the defense. Still a two to one deficit. UCLA's offense coming back up. Bottom of the fifth inning here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. Jonah Malkin, delighted to be with you for this Saturday matinee. The Bruins and the Hornets. Third series between these two programs dating back to 1990. UCLA swept the two-game home series 9-7 and 13-5. But the Hornets won their last meeting in 2019. Lucchesi still dealing. First pitch a strike to Jack Holman, who flew out to left his first time up. Now the stretch. Fastball dips below. One ball and one strike. Holman batting 241 this season. Hit a homer against Omaha in the third game of the series. That was his only home run of the season. Bounced foul. And that just is ruled foul. So Jack Holman will get another chance. And Shelly Samar would have been there regardless Good opportunity for the lefty hitter. Again with the one, two, tails away, two balls, two strikes. Low and outside, three balls and two strikes. Full count situation for Jack Holman. This is a Bruins team that surprisingly didn't use any pinch hitters last night against Tulane. They rode their starting lineup all the way through. Payoff is fouled out of play, and we'll do it again. About to be the 60th pitch for Noah Lukenzi. This is where the gamesmanship comes in. He and Tread will both have been sensational. Lukenzi's been a little bit sharper. So 
will come set. And the payoff pitch. That's a bouncer up the middle that's going to get through. And a leadoff single for Jack Holman. And a good start for the sophomore delivering his eighth hit of the season. Just the fourth hit of the game. Again, Lukenzi hasn't made many mistakes. Gorson popped him once to deep. Now it sets the table for Knox LaPosser. Graduate student out of Madison, Mississippi, pulls bunt. In there anyway for a strike. Second consecutive start. This time he does lay the bunt, and that will work effectively. A sacrifice bunt to allow Holman to advance to second, and the Bruins have their tying run. Over at the second bag. One three put out, sacrifice bunt for LaPosser, and the baton gets hand to A.J. Salgado. He reached base on a walk, was caught trying to steal second. Blatnick gunned him down, Goldsmith with a great tag. But he did reach base his first time up. Lefty hitter. He's going to put a charge into this one high and deep into center. Back goes rolling, and he's going to leap and make the catch for out number two. That had a chance to get out of here, at least for the moment. Stayed in play long enough, and the junior with a nice defensive catch. Again, that's how their fortunes ended against USC, a near home run. From Bajorquez, Salgado turned on that one pretty well. Just couldn't get out of the ballpark. Again, 395 into straight center. Two hop to third. Bajorquez collects. And did he get it? No. Kept it a little too high for Vincelli Samar. And a good job from Cody Schreier to beat out the throw and just duck his head underneath. Nice infield single from Cody Schreier, his first hit of the game. He had been 0 for 2 prior to that. Holman advances to third, and the Bruins have runners at the corners. And now in a great spot. With just the guy, Deuce Gorson's going to go for it on the first pitch. That'll get through the infield in RBI for Gorson. And we are tied at two. Schreier gets pushed to second. And Deuce Gorson delivers his third RBI in the last two games. The second RBI of the game today on back-to-back -back plate appearances. This Bruins team just comes at you in waves. And now come the questions, and it looks like that'll be it for Lou Kenzie. Coach Christensen points to the bullpen. We'll take a brief break. New pitcher come to the mound for the Hornets when we return.
Jasper Nelson coming in to relieve Noah Lukenzi. Went four and two thirds, nearly managed to go through all five. Allowed five hits, two runs, both of which were earned a walk and a strikeout. But the junior out of Las Vegas making his fourth appearance. Last appeared in the seventh inning versus Nevada. Helped to put the finishing touches on a game that the Hornets won 9 4. Kick and wind up in the slider. Stays inside, one ball, no strikes. Deuce Gorson just delivered an RBI single to tie the game for the Bruins. And now Kyle Karros, who's one for two, steps in with two runners on. Stays high and inside, two balls and no strikes. Karros, 489 on base percentage, 722 slug percentage. Big hack comes up empty, two and one. Big spot for Jasper Nelson, former Sasquatch. Played two seasons at Spokane Falls Community College the last two years. Kicks and fires a beautiful fastball. Paves the outer corner, two and two. So Gorson at first, Schreier at second. Karos looking to knock in another run. Fastball stays low and the count moves full. It's certainly been a faster paced game than the last several for UCLA. Payoff pitch ripped foul and back against the backstop. Twelve RBIs for Kyle Karos. He loves being in this spot, loves the attention on him from the perspective of opportunities within the game to drive in runs. One of the leaders of this UCLA team. Payoff pitch, check swing. And that's going to sail foul over the concourse and into the parking lot. Was the best Bruin from a statistical standpoint against Vanderbilt. Batted 272 in that series. Payoff pitch, tipped foul again. Can the Bruins do more damage here in the fifth? Offering, and that's going to get through the gap into left. Turning for home is Schreier. The play to third is not in time. And an RBI single from Kyle Karos gives the Bruins their first lead of the game. Back-to-back -back RBI base hits. First from Gorson, then from Karos. Second run to be driven in in this inning. And just like that, the Bruins are in front. Trail 2-0 heading into the bottom of the fourth. Chipped away. Gorson with a solo shot in the bottom half. And now the offense starting to see a little bit more green grass in front of it as Dalen Reyes with runners at the corners takes the ball up and away. Reyes 0 for 2 today. A fly out to center, a pop-up. In the infield. Now the run will be attributed, though, to Jasper Nelson, as that's going to stay fair down the third baseline. The one hop and snagged up by Vincelli Samar. Did a good job to hold on to that. But the Bruins... Add to their total. They take the lead for the first time up three to two on four hits, two runs, no errors, and two left on base. We're through five here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. On to the middle inning, inning number six, coming up next.
Time to see how Sacramento State responds, staring at their first deficit heading into the sixth. Bruins tacked on two runs on back-to-back -back RBI singles to propel them in front. As Jorge Bajorquez, who ended the bottom half of the, fit of the fifth with a 5-3 put out, takes a breaking ball for a strike from Treadwell to begin the sixth. Nothing in one. He's 0 for 2 today is Bajorquez. Batting 333 on the season with 11 hits. 12-6 just dips below the zone. One ball, one strike. He's connected on a double in three straight games. Three multi-hit games this season for Bajorquez. Hasn't been the case tonight. 1-1, one, one, runs low and outside, 2-1. and one. He was the only Hornet last season to start every game. Played and started in all 58. First on the team in hits, second in doubles and runs. Pulls it foul. Count stays at 2-2. Two two. Already 75 pitches thrown by Alonzo Treadwell. Sophomore out of Coto de Casa, California. Modern day high school product. Again, turns to the breaking ball, and that's just going to drift foul. Would have been a difficult throw from Karos to make. Hornets again had their three game win streak snapped last night. Trying to create another one against their most difficult opponent thus far. Fouled back against the screen. Their coaching staff though was super, was super rather excited about this opportunity today. Chance to prove to themselves they can compete with the best. They've represented themselves favorably today. And still very much in this game. Tacked on two runs in the fourth. Treadwell looking for his ninth strikeout. And he's got it. Cuts him down. One shy of matching his career high. I'd mentioned to Treadwell, hey, the last time that you started here at Jackie Robinson, you threw for a career-high 10 strikeouts. He said, well, hopefully I can replicate that performance today. And he's certainly been getting closer at 9 as the first pitch to Gunnar Goldsmith. Just outside, one ball, no strikes. Goldsmith came around to score in the fourth. Takes a strike down the heart of Westwood for 1-1. One and one. Former Cougar at Washington State back in 2021 is Goldsmith. Played one season in Pullman. Swings and misses for strike number two. Just didn't really love the experience. Wanted more playing time. Wanted to be a more vital piece of the team. And he's been afforded that opportunity here. The one-two runs up and away for two and two. Second baseman looking for a second hit of the game. 2-2, two -two, chopped to short. Schreier is there and gets the trigger off in time for the second out. So Treadwell has retired six Hornets in a row as Vahiva Aloy, who's 0 for 2, still looking for his first connection of the afternoon, trying to change that with two outs. Breaking ball got him out in front. 
Nothing in one. Treadwell has done a great job showing the resolve. Since conceding that two-run home run to Jeffrey Hurd, he's recorded three strikeouts, hasn't given up even a hit. 0-1, sails upstairs, one ball, one strike. It's no coincidence that Treadwell was the starting pitcher in the two shutout victories for the Bruins this season. 1-1 one, one turns to the curve. 2-1. and one. Just speaks to how dominant he's been and perhaps more importantly, the confidence that the team and the coaching staff has in his abilities. 2-1, two, two-seamer fastball missed outside, three balls and one strike. Entering this game among pitchers in the NCAA with zero earned runs as the count moves full, only nine had actually pitched in more innings than Treadwell. So he's also doing it in bulk as well. Payoff pitch. That's gently bouncing up the middle and a two-out single for Alloy. Just got enough of the lumber on it to get through the infield. And a two-out single. His first hit of the game extends the sixth inning for the Hornets. Fourteenth hit of the season for the freshman out of Hawaii. I'll bring up Cesar Valero, designated hitter, junior born in Calgary. Takes a first pitch strike for nothing and one. Was one for four against USC. His season high, three hits against North Dakota State earlier this year. Was third on the team in batting average last season. They were certainly glad to have him back in 2023. Sits back against the screen, and the Hornets are down to their final strike. Looking to match his career high with 10 strikeouts is Treadwell. A chance right now up in the count, 0-2. Throw over to first. First time we've seen that. That's another one of the changes in college baseball. Pitchers are allowed to throw over a maximum of three times, but if on the third time they can't catch the runner, it's an automatic balk. So there's number two. If he throws over a third time and they can't tag out Aloy, that would be ruled an automatic balk. Just trying to keep him honest. 0-2 count, two outs in the six. The breaking ball got him to just tip it foul. Players digging in. 0-2 from Treadwell. Breaking ball just breaks away. One ball, two strikes. Game of inches. David Buck, the home plate umpire, didn't give him that one. one two from Treadwell. Runner's going to go. Breaking ball stays high. The throw is in time. LaPasser on the money. Gorson with the tag, and it keeps the Bruins in front. On to the bottom of the six as the Hornets can't play at any runs. One hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Five, six, and seven batters due up for the Bruins on the other side of the break.
And welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium. Carson Yates to lead things off for the Bruins as we begin the bottom of the sixth. One for two is Yates today. Delivered a base hit his last time up, coupled with a fly out to right. Jasper Nelson still on the mound. Has that quick release. Missed on the first pitch for 1-0. and oh. Came in to relieve Noah Lukenzi. Second pitch popped foul. One ball, one strike. Bruins haven't been in many tight games this season. They narrowly lost to Vanderbilt in the third and final game of the series, 2-1. to one. Had ample chances in that game as the slider stays high for 2-1. and one. One fastball ripped up the middle. And a leadoff single for Carson Yates. He is connected on back-to-back -back hits. And the Bruins have a runner safely aboard. Seventh hit of the game for the Bruins as their first pinch hitter will come in, John John Vaughns. Not only a tank of an individual, one of the strongest players on this team. Huge lefty hitter already with three home runs this season, batting 294. Pinch hitting for Toussaint Bythewood, who was 0 for 2 up until this point. Delivered that mammoth home run against Omaha in the second game of that series. one the sidearm throw stays outside. Two balls and no strikes. Bonds didn't play against Vanderbilt in the first game of that series. Runner's going to go. Fouls it off for two and one. So Yates will have to stroll back to first. Coach Savage throwing out some alternate lineups. Depending on the matchup, that's always what he says. You have to adjust. Matchups accordingly. Slices one into left. Hurd is back there and makes the catch. One gone. Jack Holman's had himself a nice after a nice afternoon. One for two came round to score his last time up. That's what began. The brief scoring spree in the fifth was driven in by Deuce Gorson. Lefty hitter with a runner over at first and one out and a throw over to first. Bruins today two for nine with runners on base. Certainly want to see that number tick up. Swings around it. Good pitch. Nothing in one. Nelson going to the fastball that time. Junior out of Las Vegas. Batters against him this season have a sub 0-60 Batting average, that drifts low and outside, two pitches, one ball, one strike. Just has nasty stuff, unpredictable, operates quickly. Perfectly situated for today's game, especially with that pitch clock. One, one, sliced foul, one ball and two strikes. Meanwhile, for Holman, 
448 slugging percentage on the season. Eighth start. Already has started in more games this season than he did all of last year. Sharply hit to second. One hop bobbled by Goldsmith. Recollects and will make the play for the second out, at least to first. But it bought Yates enough time to advance to second. Could have turned that into a double play, but couldn't control it. Came sizzling off the bat of Holman, but it allows Yates to advance into scoring position. Where the Bruins have had a little bit more success, two for five today with runners in scoring position. Knox LaPosser did a good job gunning down the Heva Alloy to end the top half of the six. He's going to pop up. The first pitch into foul territory down the first base line. Vincenny Samar holds on and keeps this a one-score game. So the Bruins do manage to get one on over to second. That was Yates left stranded. No errors, one hit, and no runs. Three to two advantage for the Bruins on to the seventh. We're through six innings here at Jackie Robinson Stadium on to the top of the seventh. A few defensive changes for UCLA. John John Vaughns, who had come in to pinch it for Tucson by the is going to take over responsibility in right field. So that'll move A.J. Salgado to center. And now Michael Barnett coming in to relieve Alonzo Treadwell. Did a good job going six innings. Did give up that two-run homer, but collected nine strikeouts to hand over the keys to the freshman out of Lafayette, the right-hander, 6'4", 190. First appearance induces one on the ground to short. There goes Schreier on the move and makes a nice toss to retire Cesar Valero to begin the seventh. Valero now 0 for 3 as a designated hitter. Visibly upset with himself. But Jeffrey Hurd, who's had a productive day, two-run home run to briefly give the Hornets a 2-0 lead. Digs back in, third plate appearance, takes a strike. 4 nothing and one. Barnett with a 1.13 ERA. He's been sensational on the mound. Has also started in two games. Brings the heat. Deals low and outside. One ball, one strike. Let's 
Two starts were against Pepperdine and Michigan, but he's made at least one appearance against every team that he's faced this season. Goes with the changeup that time. Strike two. Another one of these promising freshmen. One, two, just getting a piece of it drifting into foul territory. A chance for Karos makes the play just in front of the dirt. And quickly there are two away in the top of the seventh. This defense for UCLA has just been tremendous. The bullpen this year hasn't allowed a single run in six of the eight games played. They have been lights out as Vincelli Samar goes around it. Another off-speeder from Barnett. That's what Coach Savage preaches. Pitching and defense, those are the two pillars that consistently hold this program together. This time he goes with the slider, one ball, one strike. Trying to make quick work of this Hornets offense in the seventh. 1-1. One, one. Vincelli Samar is going to get a good piece of that one, but backtracking is Yates at the warning track, makes the catch. And that will end the inning. Quick three up, three down for Michael Barnett onto the bottom of the seventh when we come back. Hope you got up and stretched a little bit as we just hit the seventh inning stretch onto the bottom half. And A.J. Salgado to lead things off for the Bruins. He's 0 for 1 with a walk, was caught stealing second back in the third. Fouls the first pitch back and out of play. Jasper Nelson still on the mound for the Hornets. He's done a really solid job since relieving Noah Lukenzi back at the end of the fourth. A one kick deals a fastball, nothing in two. AJ Salgado described the team's motto as he's going to chop this one into the glove of Nelson. A quick flip over to first in time. Or no. You'll say that Vincelli Samar bobbled it. Not enough of a clean control. And so we'll see as the umpires convene. But it was interesting talking to Salgado. He described the team's motto as tough, exciting, 
and dominant. And I asked him, was that a motto that the players came up with or the coaches tried to preach? And he said that was all the players. And the players take a lot of pride in their sense of agency and their sense of control over the team's identity. And Mike Lusky, the first base umpire, concurs with the call. So I'll go down as the second error. Nelson gets charged with the infraction. So an E1, second error of the game for the Hornets in a delicate spot. And Coach Christensen doesn't look to be taking many chances. He's going to walk on over to the mound. And we will likely see a new pitcher for Sacramento State. He has pitched well. But this is a Hornets team that very much feels like they're in this game. They certainly are. They've had a couple clean cracks at it. And perhaps this is just a conversation. And for the time being, that's all it will be. But the leash has certainly felt a tug. And we'll see how much longer Jasper Nelson is given for the reins. Trying to work around a leadoff error as Cody Schreier looks to take advantage. Sophomore batting 308. He's been striking with some hot iron the last couple of days. Takes a slider in there for a strike. One for three, came around to score in the fifth. Quick release, dips below, one ball and one strike. Again, the second pitch be torched over the wall against Tulane yesterday. 1-1 one, one slider, chased it, stayed up high. Good pitch from Nelson, 1-2. and two. Nelson looking for his first strikeout of the game. One two delivery got him to swing on the fastball. It climbed the ladder and it's the first strikeout for Nelson and the first out in the bottom of the seventh. New score sent, home run, three driven in with an RBI single, was left stranded at third his last time up, first pitch tails away, one ball, no strikes. Leading the team in batting average, in fact hit the go-ahead home run in the seventh inning versus Vanderbilt in that second game of the series, but they ultimately won. Second pitch runs low and inside, 2-0. and oh. In fact, following his home run, Darius Perry, who's not playing today, also had a home run in that seventh inning. Gave the Bruins a 2-0 lead that they wouldn't surrender. Third pitch is in there for a strike, two balls in one strike. It's the lefty hitter, Deuce Gorson. One, two on its way is poured in there, two and two. Salgado over at first, reached on the air, committed by Nelson. The big lead off the bag. Two, two slider jammed him up, but we'll do it again.
Big spot for Nelson here in the seventh. Tipped foul, and that might have even clipped the hand of Gorson. You could see him trying to flex his fingers a little bit. So he'll dig back in. Two and two on its way and fouled opposite field. Just over the heads of the UCLA pitchers in their bullpen. Slider this time, he pulls foul. And this pitcher-batter duel will continue. And this has been a common theme for UCLA, not only today, but throughout the season. They do not acquiesce easily. Coach Savage loves this, talks about wanting competitive quality at-bats. Fake go by Salgado. Deuce Gorson's going to dump one into right field. Salgado looked to be perhaps taking off regardless, but a nice shot into right for Deuce Gorson. That's three consecutive hits for the sophomore. So Salgado moves into scoring position. Bruins have another threat. Already leading three to two. Scored one run in the fourth, played it two in the fifth. And have a chance here in the seventh. Just one gone with two on. And Kyle Karos delivered an RBI single his last time up. Great chance for him. He'll take a strike. He's made it now four straight games with at least one hit. Third season with the Bruins. Kicks and fires 0-1. It's going to be flown into center. Rollings there to make the catch and hold the runners at bay for the second out. And if Sacramento State can keep this a one-run game, they will be in a great position heading into the eighth, but if the Bruins can find a way to sneak one through this infield, it may feel like the backbreaker as Dalen Reyes, who is 0 for 3, he has struggled today. He's been trying to work on that consistency all season. Takes a first pitch slider off the plate. 1 and 0. Junior out of Northridge, California. One point had a nine-game hit streak last season that was the third longest streak by a Bruin that year. Even ended the season reaching base in 15 straight games. Just a model of consistency at that time. Fastball stays in, paves the corner one and one. But one of the most versatile players was used in a myriad of ways. Played four different positions last season. 1-1 one, one slider, soft chopper, charging is Bajorquez. The flip is in time. Held on by Vincelli Samar on the 5-3 put out. So the Bruins can't drive in any runs on one hit, one air, and two left on base. We've got a tight one here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. Top of the eighth coming up next.
even the birds are getting hungry here in Westwood, rummaging for some food. This is the end of the winter season for them, of course. And it's probably not very enjoyable to watch all these other people enjoying the concessions around here. On to the top of the eighth. Glad to have you with us. Three to two ball game, UCLA looking to make it seven consecutive wins at home. They are undefeated here in Westwood this year. Barnett, the freshman, deals the first pitch. Fouled out of play by Carson Blatnick. Nothing in one. He's 0 for 2 today. Hornets have to be feeling pretty good, however. They've committed two errors. They've only connected on, on four hits in the game. They've allowed eight, and yet they're only down by a single run. Lefty hitter proposes on his knee. It's nothing in two. Good pitch from the freshman Barnett. Back in high school, was a stud, 1.28 ERA his senior season. There's a reason why he was so coveted by this Bruins pitching staff. 0-2, got him again. Fastball stays low. Knocks out Blatnick, sends him packing, and there's one gone to begin the eighth. They really just do have an embarrassment of riches. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they are arguably the best bullpen in the country. Crenshaw takes an off speeder that is poured in there for strike one. Crenshaw 0 for 2. Junior out of Fullerton. Former Hornet at Fullerton Junior College. Began his career actually at Santa Ana College with the Dons. Takes a slider, sends one deep into left field. Tracking it down is Yates, and he makes the play. Turned on the Jets at the last second. And quickly, the Hornets find themselves down to their final out in the eighth. But it helps when you have a common composed junior and Josh Rowling hit a home run against USC last night. In fact, he has hit a home run in two straight games. Drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the 39th round back in the 2019 MLB draft. Played one season with the Bears of Cal. Now has found his home in Sacramento. Staring at a 1-0 count. The pitch is in there down the middle. One ball, one strike. This team, though, has showed so much resolve over the course of the season. The Hornets have been in every single game they've played as Barnett gets him to come up empty on the swing, one and two. Barnett one strike away. Just tipped foul and back. Laposer had a chance to hold on. Would have been a difficult play. And the freshman will have to earn it at least one more time. 11 strikeouts on the season for Barnett. One, two, slider tipped foul. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The pitch whacked out of play. Rowling's been able to reach base in four consecutive games. He's had two plus hits in two of his last three outings. Looking to make it three of four if he can get on here. 
One two from Barnett glides outside. Two and two. That's a good pitch though. Even Laposer gave him a brief nod of approval. One of those useful quote unquote waste pitches just to get rolling to bite. Two two just dips below the zone. And we move to a judgment count. Pitch number 22, Barnett deals. Chopped high and fouled on the third baseline. Just past the two hour mark, a chance to go into the bottom half and that's gonna be ripped into left. A two out clutch single from Josh Rowling extends this inning for the Hornets as they've got their tying run safely aboard at first. And now Coach Savage will walk on over to the mound. We'll see if that's it for the freshman. If it is, he's performed well. And that will be it. So we'll step aside for a brief break. New pitcher coming to the mound for the Bruins to try and close out this eighth when we return. So Luke Jewett is going to come in and relieve Michael Barnett, the designated closer for the Bruins this season out of Ladera Ranch in his sophomore season. Already with one save this season, it came in the Bruins' game two victory over the fifth-ranked Commodores. They won 3-0. Had one save last season, but coming into this year, he was selected to the Stopper of the Year preseason watch list. Of course, an annual award handed out to the top relief pitcher in the country. One of just 81 pitchers selected. Had a tremendous freshman campaign, a 3-1 record, 3.68 ERA. This season hasn't given up a single run as the first pitch to Jorge Bajorquez is fouled back against the screen, trying to... Provide some mop-up duties here in the eighth. Josh Rowling delivered a two-out single to knock out Michael Barnett. Went one and two-thirds. That was the only hit he had given up. 
Nice slider. Just dips below for Jewett. Nothing in two. Already four strikeouts this season. For Jorquez, hitless this afternoon. No two from Jewett. One ball, two strikes. Had the most appearances of any Pac-12 pitcher last season. Led the team in 2022. Check swing, and Mike Lusky says he went around it. The Horsky is struck out, and Jewett does the job to end the eighth. No runs on one hit, no error, and one left on base. Bruins up by one, heading into the bottom half. Five, six, and seven batters due up for the Bruins. A beautiful day in Los Angeles. Mid-50s, perfect weather for baseball as the shadows just begin to cast over Jackie Robinson Stadium. Carson Yates, who's had a productive two for three outing, will lead things off for the Bruins to begin the bottom of the eighth. Luke Jewett. Came in to do a nice job and cut any momentum. Hornets had a runner at first in the top half. Uh, whistles up and in. One ball, no strikes. Jasper Nelson still on the mound. He's been pitching well. Just a couple hits, one run, but it wasn't earned. They haven't been able to touch him up yet. Second pitch runs outside. Two balls, no strikes. Down the heart of the plate, two and one. Yates, back-to-back -back base hits in the sixth and in the fourth. And goes around it on the check swing. Then quickly, Nelson has evened up the count. Fell behind quickly as Hornets have some pitchers warming up in their bullpen just in case. Slider slides off, and the count moves full. Coach Christensen came on to have a conversation with him. Fastball is lifted into right center. Rolling, trying to track it down. Called off by Crenshaw, who makes the catch as his hat falls off. Distractions doesn't matter. He's impervious to him. And he makes the play for out number one. Had to put on his track cleats for that catch. And that will be it for Nelson. So a new pitcher coming on the mound for the Hornets. Trying to keep this a one-score game.
So coming on for Jasper Nelson, the Southpaw Max Petty, junior out of Rockland, California. Whitney High School product in his junior season, fifth appearance. He came in with one out remaining in the sixth inning against USC, finished the sixth inning last night. Western Athletic Conference All-Academic Team selection as well. Has only pitched in four and a third innings, and he is staring at a tall task. John John Vaughns, the lefty power hitter out of Pasadena. Digs back in, second plate appearance for him. Southpaw deals up and away, one ball, no strikes. Carson Yates flew out to right, but it was close enough to the track that Coach Christensen had felt it was time to pull Nelson. But he gets Vaughn's there for strike one. Southpaw comes set in the 1-1. One, one. Fouled out of play, 1-2. and two. Petty, born in Houston, Texas, but moved to Rockland in his youth. Slider stays high, two and two. Had the third most appearances on the team last year with 25. Already his fifth appearance this season. Two, two, stays high and the count moves full. So John John Vaughns has done a nice job to battle back into a favorable count situation. Payoff stays high, and Vaughns draws three straight walks for a one-out walk. It's just the second walk drawn by the Bruins today. They've got 63 drawn walks this season. Top 10 in the NCAA in that department. In fact, they're one of just three schools with at least 50 drawn walks and under 20 walks issued. First pitch is going to get through into right. This time it's Jack Holman who buys Vaughn's enough time to slide into third. Holman with a big time hack into right, his second hit of the game, and the runners have moved into the corners. UCLA back in scoring position. In fact, going back to that last comment, Oregon State and NC State, North Carolina State, were the only other teams that had the same such ratio. As Knox LaPosser still seeking his first hit of the game. In a great spot here with runners at the corn corners. The southpaw deals, and he comes up empty, nothing and one. Bruins batting 250 tonight with runners in scoring position. Trying to add some insurance runs in the eighth. Laposser watches that one stay high. One ball, one strike. And the fastball misses upstairs, two and one to LaPosser. Petty in a difficult spot, the left-hander. Just two strikeouts this season. Staring at a 2-1 to LaPosser. And induces a pop-up, just what he was looking for. Petty off the mound, gets called off, and Vincelli Samar makes the catch. So that was exactly what you were hoping for if you were Sacramento State. The antithesis if you were a UCLA or are a UCLA fan. And now 
now it allows Petty to stare directly at A.J. Salgado and match up with him individually. Lefty on lefty, which typically favors the pitcher. Slides outside. One ball, no strikes. Going to that front door slider this time. Salgado reached base on an error back in the seventh. Goes with the heater, paves the outer corner. One and one. Bruins trying to cash in. Slider drifts outside, two balls in one strike. And you can see right now Petty targeting that lower outer corner, trying to keep everything away from the inside of the plate. 2-1, got him in a jam. Two balls and two strikes. John John Vaughns with that speed over at third. But Horquez is not even concerned about him. A couple of steps inside to try and protect the gap. With Holman over at first. 2-2 two, two stays high, looking for a call from Joe Burleson. The third base umpire says he withheld the swing. Full count. Bruins trying to deliver a body blow in the eighth. Hornets trying to keep this a one score into the ninth. Petty strikes him out. Big time strikeout from the junior, and it keeps this a one-run game as no runs come around. One hit, no errors, and two left on base. To the top of the ninth, Bruins defense with a chance to close this out. Welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium. Bruins trying to put on the final touches here in Westwood as we head into the ninth, narrowly in front of Sacramento State, three to two. Hornets took the first lead of the game back in the fourth, driving in two. Bruins responded with one and two in the fourth and fifth innings respectively. And now Luke Jewett looking for his second Save of the season. First pitch fired in there for strike one. Gunner Goldsmith, the Heva Aloy, Cesar Valero. The three guaranteed players for the Hornets to get a crack at it. Second pitch missed outside. One ball and one strike. Out of the stretch, brings the heat, just outpowered him, and it's one and two. Goldsmith one for three this afternoon. And pardon, pinch hitter Zach Malone. Pinch hitting, excuse me, not Goldsmith, but Malone is struck out, and now it's scooped up by LaPosser, a sidearm throw. The bag is held on, dug out by Reyes. First out, Bruins are two away, so a strikeout and a 2-3 put out to Zach Malone. 
was not Gunnar Goldsmith. Came in to pinch hit for him. And now Vahiva Aloy, who was one of the starters. You can see his production today. Trying to give his team a chance. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Sacramento State, by the way, coming into this season, the only Division I baseball program in California with 30-plus wins in each of the last nine seasons. Off to a good start in 2023, but staring at another loss as Aloy falls behind nothing in two. His one for three was caught stealing and was struck out looking his first time up. 0-2 from Jewett. Dipped back and foul. Savage turning to Jewett for the final four outs. He's two away. Oh, two. Got him on the slider. Just dipped at the very end. And the Bruins are one out away. Second consecutive strikeout for Jewett. Third consecutive going back to the end of the eighth. And the Hornets are down to their final out. And the challenge falls on the shoulders of Cesar Valero. Junior batting 250 on the season. He's going to drive this one into center on the first pitch. Back at the wall. It's held on by Salgado. And the Bruins hold off a late scare. Valero put a charge in that one. And Salgado had to make the catch just in front of the wall. But the Bruins prevail 3-2 as they remain perfect at home on the season. Sacramento State falls to 6-3 and three on the year, 0-2 oh on the road this year. They will continue in the Southern California College Baseball Classic with a matchup against Tulane tomorrow. They'll stay on the road for a couple more days. They don't return home until March 8th. But they fought valiantly today, coming up just a little bit short. The Bruins, meanwhile, improved to 8-2 and two on the season, 7-0 and oh at home. And they will take on their arch rival, the USC Trojans, tomorrow at 2.30 Pacific Standard Time right here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. So the Hornets only manage... To connect on five hits, they committed two errors, but the Bruins produced enough offense. Nine hits, three runs. Deuce Gorson with a solo run and back-to-back -back RBIs by Gorson and Karos allow the Bruins to narrowly edge out the Hornets. Well, that'll do it for us here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. Special thanks to our director, Rob Elsiwi. Our producers, Calvin and Danielle Spencer, Jeff McFadden, our camera operator, and the entire four-team productions crew. I'm Jonah Malkin saying thanks for watching. Your final score, UCLA over Sacramento State, 3-2. to two. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon.